fair or broken? Hello everyone, my name is MJohn90 and today we are reviewing Mass Effect 2 on Insanity. Mass Effect 2 originally launched for the PC and 360 in 2010 while also coming out for the PS3 in 2011. Mass Effect 2 on Insanity is one of the most intense, sweaty, and sometimes downright tragic difficulties in gaming, yet it remains fair. More often than not, having the player be more upset at themselves for making a mistake than be mad at the game for generating some kind of mystical BS to kill them. If there was a tier list for how good the hardest difficulty in a video game was, Insanity would be S tier. It is almost required that you New Game Plus to start your Insanity run. Having a fresh character in Insanity would be Mass Effect 2's equivalent to Halo's Lasso, at least for the first half of the game or so. However, you may still need to respec your character more than once during your playthrough. This is usually for one of two reasons. 1. You choose to keep shuffling because that is what the mission slash missions tailored to. Maybe you need better shield breaking, or a way to deal with health regenerating enemies, and you don't have the points to do both well enough. 2. The way you played your character's class on an easier difficulty isn't working out as well. Maybe you just need to make a small change or two and you're good to go. Mass Effect 2's Insanity difficulty does a brilliant job of balancing what a player needs to know in order to master the game. Proper use and knowledge of movement, cover, team management, power management, weapon selection, enemy composition, and aiming are all required to tackle enemy 2 at its hardest. While the Geth Pulse Rifle may be better for you because it has more ammo, and it absolutely shreds through shields and barriers with ease, with the right ammo of course, it may not be the right weapon for your squad mates, as they often take shorter peaks out of cover, thus making the Vindicator Rifle an overall better choice since it does more damage with less shots. If you like to snipe, enemies will constantly rush your position seemingly knowing that you are at an inherent disadvantage of not always being able to get those one-shot kills, forcing you to retreat, flank, and push your way back up towards your objective. Love a good close quarters fight? Either play perfectly or face absolute annihilation. Throw your powers around a lot? Better be good with a piece as well, because those powers never seem to recharge quite fast enough. Also, no matter how you play, powerful weapon user or tech slash biotic god, Miss with your big damage dealer and your SOL, enemies aren't very forgiving of those kinds of mistakes. Another factor that plays perfectly into Mass Effect 2's favor is, of course, its characters, specifically your squad mates. Talking to them and completing their loyalty missions is paramount to your survival on Insanity. Having them go down in the middle of battle is truly distressing in the moment, as you now have one or two less people to do damage and spread out the enemy fire and abilities. Sure, you could bring them back right away but they have a high chance of going down again soon after if you haven't played your cards right, making the people you bring along with you each mission that much more important. Couple this with Mass Effect 2's amazing storytelling and truly deep universe, you'll be hard pressed to find a more engaging and challenging difficulty for a game. Balancing insanity was surely no easy feat for Bioware at the time. You have to make it challenging, yet not so hard that you give up on the game and story entirely, leaving the player as one of the enemies found in the game, a husk. As I mentioned before, Insanity belongs in the Hall of Fame for the hardest video game difficulties. With very few sections of the game that leave the player with a total disdain for all things sci-fi, Mass Effect 2 earns a 10 out of 10 for its Insanity difficulty.